intelligence today because she has multiple intelligence and that would include spatial intelligence at the same time logic and at the same time actually literature so that is language and linguistics intelligence so stay tuned with gk marsh but for now let's actually have her to greet here in our program today good morning to you um anupama Bhattacharya. good morning jk and thanks for having me here it's a pleasure that's wonderful we're going to actually going to learn more about your journey you are how you've been nurtured and inspired as a youth because this is a youth crew because <laughs> i met you because you made a portrait of your husband yes and through you oh i look in and your portrait is about your husband leaning onto a desk full of books correct and then and then well, what books is this some of them are oh are you familiar for me you're of the indian culture but it's amazing that you're able to 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 use your husband your family member as your as your model <laughs> i wonder how long you actually how 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 sarab actually you know in the state this is a, it's a pleasure actually to have anupama in here and um because she is actually able to juggle and put balance in all her activities and and, and, and dealings and, and, and works not just as an artist but at the same time being logical so it's a balance but before further ado this is Anupama Bhattacharya welcome to generational Anupama finally have it because you had COVID yes that's correct so who is Anupama Bhattacharya in your own words well, I actually, I mean, it's, it's really good that you talked about different intelligences because I see myself as someone who is creative, imaginative, but also very, very logical. So I enjoy working with Excel files just as much as I love painting. And um, going back to what you were saying earlier, um, the best scientists are actually those who are also artists. For example, Einstein. And the best artists are also those who are very interested in science, like Da Vinci. So what you said about different intelligences coming together, that's very relevant. And um, talking about my childhood, I grew up in India and in the foothills of the Himalayas. Wow. And I initially wanted to be um, a scientist. I mean, I was really, really interested in science. But at the same time, I was really good at painting and drawing and um, that continued throughout my life these two different two pronged interests that continue to come together and make me who i am in my work in my art in my approach to life it's always been a combination of logic and art and um, I moved to Australia in the year 2003. Before that, I used to work in India as a journalist. And I used another one of my skills, which is linguistic skills okay. writing. Okay, very important. There are some programs like uh, mixed writing for children. And I think that would be great, isn't it? And for those with linguistic intelligence, children, you can bring them into the post. The post is our paper for, for around, around fourth degree that area. And, and you know, you could, you could be a mentor for them. I could. In fact, I used to work for a children's magazine at one point oh. of time. Oh, wow. It was called Target. And it was a completely different way of writing because when you're writing for children and young adults, you have to be um, to the point. You have to make it interesting. You have to have that spark in your writing. So that required a slightly different perspective to my writing skills than what I used later in my life as a journalist, as a serious journalist. Yes, because journalism is just Factual, yeah, you know what, when, what, how. That's it. We don't put any emotions there. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, when coming from India as a migrant, were you did you come here when, when through your work with your husband, or or did you were you born here, or no, no, no. We came here in year two thousand three yes. um, as permanent residents because we applied for a permanent residency visa while we were in India. And that's because we had come here on a holiday and really loved the place. So we thought, okay, let's move to Australia. And uh, we actually came here without a job. We just had no clue what we were going to do. That's amazing. Yeah. So you come here as a tourist, is it? And no, we came here first as a, as a tourist. Yes. Then we came here as permanent residents. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah especially not many people really eyeing Australia to be uh, uh, their permanent home, isn't it? Yes. Yes. But it was fun. I mean, um, 
we got a job pretty quickly and um, I joined the legal information services company that I worked in for almost 16 years. I mean, I stayed there for almost 16 years. So yeah, it was, it was quite fun. That is wonderful to know. The reason being, you know, before lockdown, there always gap years of, you know, Australian Caucasians. They have gap years. They don't go to uni right away. They want to, they want to explore their life. They travel, you know. And uh, when you travel, you get a job. Oh, I want to work here in this country. But your key is your education. That's your weapon, isn't it? That's your, can you put your foot into the door? Yes. But if you don't have that, mm -hmm. you know, it's very difficult and competitive out there. And education also opens your eye to so many cultures, so many possibilities. So I personally feel that at least everyone should have that basic education, which creates the foundation of life. Certainly. And it comes from home, isn't it? Yes. It really comes from home. What is out is really parents. So it's not just very much like I own you. No, mm -hmm. actually, it was a stewardship. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back to you, you actually live in India and you just fronting you, when you go out, it's the Himalayas, Himalayan right. mountain. Oh yes. my God. That's why you have those painting, and you mentioned that with the view, your eye makes it, you know, letting you, this is a picture. Yes. Um, I, I feel that growing up in a place like that really influenced my art because Nowadays, kids spend so much time on screens, whereas I used to sit out and just look at the mountains for hours on end. And the mountains often look like paintings, like there's so many layers of colors. And it actually teaches you how to notice things in nature. Um, it teaches you to see different shapes that exist that we sometimes don't even notice. So looking at that, looking at those, I wanted to capture that, but in my own way. So I personally feel that art is not just about capturing what you're seeing, but putting your interpretation to it. So it is not just a motor skill that you're using, but you're also using your skills of imagination, of creating abstracts out of it. Going back to you, you actually live in India and you just fronting you, when you go out, it's the Himalayas, Himalayan right. mountain. Oh yes. my God. That's why you have those painting, and you mentioned that with the view, your eye makes it, you know, letting you, this is a picture. Yes. Um, I, I feel that growing up in a place like that really influenced my art because nowadays kids spend so much time on screens, whereas I used to sit out and just look at the mountains for hours on end. And the mountains often look like paintings, like there's so many layers of colors. And it actually teaches you how to notice things in nature. Um, it teaches you to see different shapes that exist that we sometimes don't even notice. So looking at that, looking at those, I wanted to capture that, but in my own way. So I personally feel that art is not just about capturing what you're seeing, but putting your interpretation to it. So it is not just a motor skill that you're using, but you're also using your skills of imagination, of creating abstracts out of the real. Certainly. Do you think yeah. it's very important now, digital age? Do you, do you believe that you know, children should be taught how to do edit and coloring in and, and edit, video edit and those things? Those are almost like essential skills these days. I know, essential now, not anymore a, a talent or not anymore, isn't it? Yes, because even in workplaces, your presentations are not just PowerPoint anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to use multimedia. So you have to know how colors work, how presentations work, how you can actually explain things without using too many words. So editing, uh, movies, um, graphic designing, all of these become almost essential life skills. I know, and I'm so happy to hear that from, from another woman. It is good to encourage those competitions here in Hawaii. Do you join competition yourself or? I just, just about started joining art competitions yes. because when I was working in my corporate job, I didn't really have a lot of time to paint. So now I'm uh, taking my art more seriously and participating in various competitions. Yes. So hopefully it will go well. Yes. <laughs> and it's not just a prize, it's a bonus, isn't it? Yes. And the lady we uh, 
I was actually a mother of a teen. Mm. They had exceeded here a month ago. Okay. And then the mom had about nine sales. But mm. it's not that. It's, it's amazing that people appreciate your artwork. And mm. through that, someone just saw it was shared through Instagram. Mm. So it's grouped, you know, um, like multimedia now. It's no longer by, 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 by words, mm. you know, um, marketing our works with words. But actually, in a click of a finger, share it, share it, share it, you know. So it's amazing. Yeah, yeah I think like for me the most fulfilling thing was um, when um, one of my customers who I painted a, a dog portrait for um, said that he cried when he got the portrait. And um, that feels more fulfilling as an artist than uh, winning prizes. Certainly, certainly. And apart from that, when did you start doing your drawing once again? Sorry, my uh, drawing? When did, uh, when did you start actually that you have realized you've got this in? Oh, what I think when I was five years old. Oh, amazing. Five years old. Yes, and then I went to school and I was painting this um, landscape in my art class and one of the other teachers came around and said, oh, you paint better than your teacher. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I had a natural affinity towards it. That's right. That's why parents out there need to be mindful. Oh, you've got something, something interesting, you know, something mm -hmm. unique to cultivate, exciting gift, isn't it? Yes, but also I feel that um, even if a child doesn't show natural affinity for it. It's worth trying because as parents, one needs to encourage children to explore new possibilities. And then the children themselves can decide what they want to do. Exactly. We name out there, these are all mm -hmm. gifts. Yeah. And we just explore and teach you. So did you take any art lessons and or any artists that you influenced? A lot of artists have influenced me, but I think what really helped me is the Sydney Art School in Holmes Bay. Okay. So I took some lessons from there, particularly in portrait painting. And it opened my eyes to some details that I wasn't aware of before. So that really enhanced my skills in terms of noticing the finer details of um, what is happening around me and being able to capture that in my paintings. That's right. And logic, you know. Because a portrait, you should always have dimension and, mm -hmm. and um, symmetry. Mm -hmm. You can't put your eye on it, otherwise it's low, and you know, mm -hmm. so it has to be. Mm -hmm. Do you actually paint with your head, or you take a picture and then it is steady? I rarely paint with a photograph unless I'm doing portraits, and it needs That's to. That's why I'm asking because you you did you did you have your husband as a model so i yeah. wonder how long it took for him to sit down and hang with that yes yeah. so with, with portraits i do some sittings and then i work with photographs but when i do landscapes or abstract or general animals then i might use a photo as a reference <coughs> but i mostly like to use my own imagination when i'm painting some people use this word craft of, of a human you know, that you can maneuver. Yeah, yeah, I don't use that. Don't no, I don't. I, I feel that working with live models, <coughs> which is what I did at the Sydney Art School, is really good because it hones your ability to see how the light reflects on the human body, on the human face. Things that you can never see in a photograph, like the tiny reflection in the eyes. That's right. Yeah. Interesting. And actually, continuing into our interview with Ms. Anapanada Macharya, we have a quote here for today, and that is, to be an artist is to believe in life. It is by Henry Miller. So how could we reflect on that one, on that quote? Well, um, art is a reflection of life. So you cannot have art if you don't believe in life. If you look at any painting, it is an artist's representation of how they perceive life. And it could be a highly vibrant presentation. It could be sometimes a softer presentation. It could be very relevant in nature, almost spiritual in nature. It could be very contemporary. It could be cynical. But an artist always represents their perception of life. And by doing so, they are demonstrating their belief in life as they say it. That's wonderful. So it's, it's great to be able to express that through, through images. Yes. yes. And we've got this 
this going on in your brain that all this one should be there and the mm -hmm. color should be there. Mm -hmm. If with your you go to you jump into your to your linguistic intelligence. You come here to Australia where you're able to to teach yourself English and you know India is so close mm -hmm. uh, under English, you know. English is always the second language, isn't it? Like us, kind of American thing to our country. Uh, most of the time, our second language. So it's good to, to learn a second language, isn't it? So yes, I mean, I learned English while I was in school. So it wasn't really something that I struggled with. I have a master's in English literature. And then you actually further honed that with, especially your, your master's. You, you just didn't, didn't go, you go higher than that. So what interesting. What made you interested in, in language and literature? Poetry, primarily. I absolutely love poetry. I used to write a lot of poetry when I was in school and in college. And I just love the beauty in words. And um, you were talking about linguistic intelligence. Yeah. Um, the ability to use language, words, it's a powerful gift because that helps you communicate and that also helps you express what you're feeling. You also talked a little bit about mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And I feel that the, if you have the ability to use words to convey what you're feeling, it can almost be like a cathartic experience where you don't hold your thoughts and feelings inside. And that is true of writing, art, any kind of expressive um, approach where which helps you take it all out express it instead of holding it in and i think that makes one feel better you know there's a study that men are much more into getting into mental health issues than women the reason is they don't shed tears you know mm -hmm. they, they don't want to show that off but for women we cry we express that and then the police are worried that problem yeah but there are some men out there who are not able to express that so I believe it's okay to, for men to, if the world is onto their shoulder and you feel like that. Mm -hmm. It's always okay to always ask for help, isn't mm -hmm. it? Absolutely. So um, thank you so much for that. We actually have here our book review for, for, for today as well. Um, I, I recently read a book. It's called, I'll talk to you about it. It's, the book is called The Overstory. It's a 2019 novel written by Richard Powers. The book won the Pulitzer Prize and the Booker Prize for its inspirational take on the environment, in particular the critical importance of trees in our lives. The book traverses multiple lives. It's almost structured like a tree, the way the different lives kind of work together. And it goes through multiple centuries to show how deeply rooted trees are and how necessary they are for the world to exist. Uh, I've taken this quote from the book, which is beautiful. This is not our world with trees in it. It is a world of trees where humans have just arrived. I, I strongly recommend this heartfelt evocation of the natural world to all young adults out there. Read the overstory, and then when you will look at the trees around you, I promise you, you will see them in a new light. And that's my book review for the day. That's my recommendation. That's wonderful. And that's the title of the book and the author once again is? Uh, the book is called The Overstory and the author is Richard Powers. 